Okay, we've studied motion along a line, one-dimensional motion, up, down, side to side, along the ramp, and learned concepts, learned how to put those concepts into variables. We've learned conceptual distinctions like displacement is different than distance, instant is different than an interval of time, and so on. Acceleration doesn't mean just increasing speed, it's decreasing speed, or turning as well. We've learned how to break vectors down, two-dimensional vectors, into two parts, into components. Add them, represent them as arrows and variables, and so on. If we put those two together, we can describe motion in two dimensions. Right? So any motion in two dimensions we can do like that. We can talk about motion in two dimensions, something going around on a plane orbiting like that. And so there are lots of motions in 2D. And this gives us quite a little, quite a bit of power. So let's do this. Let's talk about how we do this. Kinematics, describing motion in two dimensions along a flat surface, for example. Uh, we're going to relate earlier and later states, as usual. We're going to look at, be aware of, and relate the kinematic concepts. But now we've got to keep track of the x, and think of that as one column, and the y motion separately, and we'll put it together to get the actual combined motion. At any instant of time, any state, say I just chose two, uh, there's a certain time, a certain position, which has x and y parts. So if I write this as a variable, I could say position vector two is x two i hat plus y two j hat. But I can just separate them, thinking that it's got an x position and a y position. It's got velocity in the x direction at that moment, so I subscript the two. Velocity at state two also has a y component, so again, that can be written as a vector in component form. Right? You can put it in polar form, however you do it. But we're going to divide it up like this. So the subscripts, careful subscripting is very important. One, two, three, I uh, recommend that. Also, don't forget the x and the y. The minute you leave that off, you're open to making a mistake. And we'll come back to acceleration. So we've got time, position, velocity, acceleration. We've got changes, changes in time between two states, earlier to later. Change in the x position, change in the y position. Together, you have the actual motion, which is the change in the actual position. You move some in the x direction, whatever that is, maybe it's east. Some in the y, maybe that's north, maybe that's horizontal, maybe that's vertical, whatever. Okay, so we're going to ultimately put it back together, but to analyze it, we're going to divide it into the x motion and the y motion as though they were separate. Change in velocity. Acceleration at state 2 in the x direction, acceleration at state 2 in the y direction, the components of the acceleration. Okay. Oftentimes, you know, we can have zero acceleration, constant acceleration, but we can't have a changing acceleration. We'll have to keep track of it, that then the acceleration at different instances instance would be different. Uh, don't worry about it too much. We need to look at specifics. Just uh, introduction here. It's usually best, usually, there you go, best, uh, or the usual best coordinate choice is a coordinate system where there's no acceleration in one direction, either the x or the y direction, and all of the acceleration is either in the x or the y direction. That's a good choice, and you'll see that as we work on it. So just kind of file that away. Okay, let's go over here and look at the theory. How do we set this up? How do we encode the process into symbols using our definitions? In general, this is important to remember, so this is always true. We've got definitions, and we can write the same definitions in the x direction with all x subscripts keeping it straight, or in the y direction. Both motions are happening, right, as a combined motion. But we're going to divide it as though there's a sort of shadow of the object in the x direction and a moving shadow in the y direction. So let's take a look at it. You've seen these before. The velocity, say it's state 1, 
in the x direction is by definition the rate at which the x position changes evaluated at whatever time. 1, 1. 2, time 2. 3, time 3. Now we can express this using your calculus as an integral. It's the same relationship. It's the same definition of what velocity means. But remember, never write x. Write delta x, because an integral is something that happens between an earlier and later state, not at a state. So it's delta x. This is important. As you get into electricity and all kinds of topics, that mistake is made. Don't make that mistake. An integral is a delta x is integral v dt. Meters per second times seconds is meters. It all makes sense. So we, whatever you need, you know, use those are the tools to solve the puzzle. Acceleration is defined as the rate of change of velocity. So you do it in the x direction at a particular instant or integrate between two instants in an interval. Then you've got the change of velocity, x, is integral of the x component of the acceleration, dt. And it's identical in the y direction. It's just the same thing, but the subscripts keep it straight because the motion in the y direction might be very different than the motion in the x direction. As I said, in one of these cases, maybe the acceleration is zero. That's going to make our work, our analysis, our mathematics, our algebra simpler. So that's always true by definition of what velocity means and what acceleration means. That's always true. However, we don't want to jump into hard cases right away. There happens to be a simpler case, uh, but it's very useful. And that is when the acceleration in the x direction is constant and the acceleration in the y direction is constant. Constant acceleration motion with a good choice of coordinates, one of these will be zero. And that's going to be really nice. You know what to do next, right? You know how to do this. You take your general definitions, you say A is constant, and you work backwards. A is constant, you pull it out, integral of dt is delta t, boom, you get your constant acceleration equations, you put that equation for v up here, integrate, and what do you get from earlier to later? You get your constant acceleration equations, which only apply in a special case. If that's not true, you've got to go back to the definition. That's all you have to do. That's ground zero right there. But if it is constant acceleration, we need to do that all the time, then you get the change in x position, the displacement in the x direction from earlier to later is the v earlier. Now, look, if I just write that, very easy to get confused. That's only the x component at that moment, times the change in time between earlier and later, plus one half the acceleration in the x direction, the x component, times the change in time earlier to later squared, right? Squared. Check the units, it all works. What do you get in the y direction? The exact same equation. And if I'm talking about a certain process, I can talk about the same two states. 1 to 2 here, 1 to 2 here. 2 to 4 here, 2 to 4 here. So the time from 2 to 4 is the same in the x equation as the time from 2 to 4 in the y equation. That's a common variable. But everything's the same except I'm talking about the y motion, the y motion, the y motion. And then what do I do? I also derive this constant acceleration equation. V later in the x, the x component of velocity at that later time is the earlier velocity, x component, plus acceleration in the x times the time. Check the units, they all work. How do I write the y equation? Boom. I highly recommend when you're doing these puzzles to write the general form and then look at each individual thing. Do I know that? Do I want that? Do I have that? Is that zero? Is that zero? Is that zero? Then write it in general, put a little checks over what you know, rewrite it, 
cleaned up to apply to a specific situation. Now, you know there's another equation, and it's sure nice, and you really don't want to have to do this on an exam. It's a little tedious unless you're asked to. Solve for t, plug it in here, plug it in here, square it, big old mess, whittles down beautifully into equation Now, if I write this, and I check my units, the units are wrong. I must have done something. Oh, if I check my units, this has got to be squared. Is that squared? No, that, the units don't work. Wait a minute. That's only in the x direction, so I better go back here. I have to put this, and then I'm not going to make any mistakes. Now, these are only two independent equations. Use two, and the third is redundant, as you know. So I take my problem. I choose two states. I write the general equation. Then I modify them to fit the case. That's the x motion. What's the y motion? Identical, except it could be a different motion. The, the mathematics, this still be later equals the earlier squared plus 2a delta. But now we're talking y. So it's delta y. It's the y component of the velocity at the later state, the y component of the, the uh, velocity at the earlier state, the y component of the acceleration. Right? And then once you've done that, you've drawn a picture and you've encoded it with these variables, these symbols, and you really can keep track of it because you carefully laid it out. Now you can go faster. I didn't put this in color. All the x's done separately. You don't need to go all the way back here unless you're asked to on an exam or something. If the acceleration is not constant, just go back here. See what you get. Use your basic calculus. If it is constant, boom. Now fit it in. Maybe you're interested from 1 to 2. Maybe later in the problem you're interested from 2 to 3. Maybe you want 1 to 4. I don't know. Write it for each one. I recommend writing that 1 to 4. 1 to 4. 1, 1 to 4, 1 to 4, 4, 1, 1 to 4, 4, 1, 1 to 4, right, delta. So, and, and just take it little by little. Don't shortcut, don't jump to the end. Don't just try to solve it in your head or, or get to the answer. Just lay this out, and that's a very, very solid technique, and you can build up your speed with that. Okay, general definitions, treating one motion as two separate motions, dividing the motion, dealing with the x components and the x motion and the y. I don't know what x is. This could be horizontal and vertical. This could be east and north. This could be along the plane of an incline and perpendicular to the plane of an incline. And we'll even see, we'll talk about circular motion as well, building off of this. And that's the general idea of analyzing two-dimensional motion with kinematics. It tells you a lot. Okay, good. We'll do some problems. See the next three videos for one problem laid out in a nice gory detail, namely projectiles, 101 plus projectile problems. Then we'll talk a little bit about relative motion and things.